Be sure to set aside a tenth of all that your fields produce each year. Eat the tithe of your grain, new wine and oil, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks in the presence of Yahweh your God at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name, so that you may learn to revere Yahweh your God always. But if that place is too distant and you have been blessed by Yahweh your God and cannot carry your tithe, because the place where Yahweh will choose to put his name is so far away. Then exchange your tithe for silver, and take the silver with you, and go to the place Yahweh your God will choose. Use the silver to buy whatever you like, cattle, sheep, wine, or other fermented drink, or anything you wish. Then you and your household shall eat there in the presence of Yahweh your God, and rejoice. And do not neglect the Levites living in the towns, for they have no allotment or inheritance of their own. It is during these feast days in which the Israelites go to that the men are to appear before the Lord, and they are not to appear empty-handed. Compare Deuteronomy 16. Three times a year all your men must appear before Yahweh your God at the place he will choose, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. No man should appear before Yahweh empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way that Yahweh your God has blessed you. If you notice here in verse 17, they are not required to bring a tithe before the Lord here, but rather give a gift in proportion to how they were blessed. This is also mentioned in verse 10. Deuteronomy 16.10 Then celebrate the Feast of Weeks to Yahweh your God by giving a free will offering in proportion to the blessings that Yahweh your God has given you. From here, we have what is referred to as the poor tithe. These are the provisions that were given to those in need. Deuteronomy 14 At the end of every three years, bring all the tithes of that year's produce and store it in your towns, so that the Levites, who have no allotment or inheritance of their own, and the aliens, the fatherless, and the widows who live in your towns may come and eat and be satisfied, and so that Yahweh your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. From there we have the priest tithe. These tithes were to be paid by the Levites and went to the priests. Consider. Numbers chapter 18. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Levites and say to them, When you receive from the Israelites the tithe I give you as your inheritance, you must present a tenth of that tithe as the Lord's offering. Your offering will be reckoned to you as grain from the threshing floor or juice from the winepress. In this way, you also will present an offering to Yahweh from all the tithes you receive from the Israelites. From these tithes you must give Yahweh's portion to Aaron the priest. You must present as Yahweh's portion the best and holiest part of everything given to you. Say to the Levites, when you present the best part, it will be reckoned to you as the product of the threshing floor or the wine press. You and your households may eat the rest of it anywhere, for it is your wages for your work at the tent of meeting. By presenting the best part of it, you will not be guilty in this matter. Then you will not defile the holy offerings of the Israelites, and you will not die. The Levites and priests were set apart for their position when Moses first received the instructions from Yahweh. Because of this position, they were not given land as the other tribes were. Deuteronomy 18. The priests who are Levites, indeed the whole tribe of Levi, are to have no allotment or inheritance with Israel. They shall live on the offerings made to Yahweh by fire, for that is their inheritance. They shall have no inheritance among their brothers. Yahweh is their inheritance, as he promised them. They were allowed cities, but not territories. 
They had 48 cities within the other tribes' territories. Numbers 35. In all, you must give the Levites 48 towns together with their pasture lands. The Levites were given the tithes in return for their work in the temple. The tithes they received were livestock, grains, and fruit. And the tithe was to be the best of what you had. Along this line, one could substitute their tithe with money instead, but they were actually charged 20% for doing so. Compare Leviticus 27. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is Yahweh's. It is holy to Yahweh. If a man wants at all to redeem any of his tithes, he shall add one-fifth to it. And concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock, of whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to Yahweh. He shall not inquire whether it is good or bad, nor shall he exchange it. And if he exchanges it at all, then both it and the one exchanged for it shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commands which Yahweh commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. There are two ways of interpreting this. One, if you choose to redeem your tithe, you are to add one-fifth of the total value to the tithe. Thus, it would go from 10% to 30% because of adding one-fifth, which is adding 20%. Or two, if you choose to redeem your tithe, you are to add one-fifth of the value of the tithe. One-fifth of 10% is 2%. Thus, resulting in 12% of being what is to be paid as a result of paying in the form of money. Either of these two interpretations could be correct, depending on one's view of the Hebrew text. However, the point here is simply that there was a penalty for paying in the form of money instead of that which came from the crops, flocks, or herds. A general understanding is that all male Levites were or became priests. But this is not so. Only the descendants of Aaron were the priests. They were indeed Levites, but only they were to be priests. However, the rest of the male Levites were to be servants for the priests. Compare Exodus 28. After you put these clothes on, your brother Aaron and his sons anoint and ordain them. Consecrate them so they may serve me as priests. And verse 43, Aaron and his sons must wear them whenever they enter the tent of meeting or approach the altar to minister in the holy place, so that they will not incur guilt and die. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants. Again, it says for Aaron and his descendants. Exodus 29, and put headbands on them. Then tie sashes on Aaron and his sons. The priesthood is theirs by a lasting ordinance. In this way, you shall ordain Aaron and his sons. Exodus 29. So I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar, and will consecrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests. Leviticus chapter 6. Give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the regulations for the burnt offering. The burnt offerings is to remain on the altar hearth throughout the night till morning, and the fire must be kept burning on the altar. Leviticus 7. This is the portion of the offerings made to Yahweh by fire that were allotted to Aaron and his sons on the day they were presented to serve Yahweh as priests. Leviticus 21. Yahweh said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, A priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean for any of his people who die. Numbers 18. Yahweh said to Aaron, You, your sons, and your father's family are to bear the responsibility for offenses against the sanctuary, and you and your sons alone are to bear the responsibility for offenses against the priesthood. So it is clear that only the descendants of Aaron are to be priests in the earthly temple. Even Yeshua himself, our high priest in heaven, is forbidden to be priest 
in the earthly temple. Compare Hebrews chapter 8. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already men who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build a tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Again, the earthly priesthood is set apart only for the descendants of Aaron. The rest of the Levites were given to the descendants of Aaron as helpers. Numbers 18. Bring your fellow Levites from your ancestral tribe to join you and assist you when you and your sons minister before the tent of testimony. They are to be responsible to you and are to perform all the duties of the tent, but they must not go near the furnishings of the sanctuary or the altar, or both they and you will die. Numbers 18. I give to the Levites all the tithes in Israel as their inheritance in return for the work they do while serving at the tent of meeting. In all of this, it is clear that these tithes went to the priests and to the Levites for their duties in the temple. Nowhere in the scriptures do we see the tithes transferred from them to pastors or teachers. This is not to say that we cannot help these individuals, for even Paul was assisted by the believers, but these were offerings and not tithes. This must be understood. Again, nowhere in the scriptures are we directed to pay these tithes to anyone other than as directed regarding the Levites and the priests. There is just no way around it. We do find Paul discussing that we should be cheerful givers and that we reap according to how we sow. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Giving is something we are encouraged to grow in. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, See that you also excel in this grace of giving. So, even though biblical tithing is not something we can do today, we can still give to those ministers that spread the eternal gospel like those who supported Paul. But it's not just in supporting ministries. Consider James chapter 1, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And let us not forget Matthew 25. Matthew 25, starting at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me.